Well, I'm here at my well, and I need to replace the switch. This one also has the um, the feature that if it runs dry, if it runs dry, it'll turn off. In other words, if you if your well runs dry and it starts sucking air, it'll turn this type of switch off, which is what I like for this well because this well will run dry. Don't this keeps me from burning my pump up. So if there's if you have a well and it's deep enough and it'll never run dry, then you can go with a pump with a switch that doesn't have uh, the on-off uh, automatic function, safety function, whatever that's called. Um, but if not, then uh, if, you, if you've got, with, like me, you've got a well that could run dry, I would highly recommend this. Probably five dollars more to have to have this type. I'll put both types in links below the video. Uh, with one of them with the safety feature, safety shut off, and one without. But this is the one with the safety shut off. Okay, so how do you replace the uh, switch? Let's just do that. First we take the old one loose. I've already taken my wires loose. Didn't show that, but just basically take your wires loose on both ends. That's, that's coming from the house. That's coming going to the pump from the switch to the pump. One set of wires comes from your power source to the switch. The other one goes from the switch down to the pump. This is a submersible pump. Okay, so we take this off and basically it unscrews. You'll have a riser nipple which is what that is. I've got like a four inch on there. You can put as short or as long as you want on there. I want it to be able to clear my uh, gauge so I don't want it real low because then I wouldn't be able to turn it. It would hit my gauge. So I use a four inch. I'll wrap that with Teflon tape and then start installing the new one. We're gonna wrap it. We're gonna be screwing this on this way so we're gonna wrap the tape that way. So when we screw it up, we have to wrap the tape around this way and we start screwing it on this way, it has a tendency to pull that tape off. So we wanna go in the direction, always when you're using Teflon tape, in the direction you will be turning uh, whatever you're putting on there, the fitting, in that direction. So that's what we'll do. put three or four wraps and then I'll kind of squeeze it just a little bit to define those threads. Helps that tape to sink in and get in those threads good so it won't come off. Okay this is the new switch. Again it has the shut off lever on it and first of all we'll screw it on there. Make sure you don't cross thread. You feel it when it Starts on there. If necessary, use a backup wrench. And it certainly might be. Mine just got pretty tight. But if you have to, hold the riser with a pipe wrench as you tighten it from below. That'll tighten it right there. That's pretty tight. Let me try to get one more turn out of it. Face it in the direction you want to face it. I like mine facing this way. I can come from this side, work my switch when I need to, if it does run dry. So now we will feed the wires through it. This one did not come with rubber grommets to put right here. Um, my other one didn't have them either. I thought it was maybe that I lost it, but apparently not. <laughs> they did not come with rubber grommets. It came with a plug but I'll have wires feeding from both sides, so I really don't need a plug. Anyway, let's bring in the hot wires. They're not hot, make sure it's turned off. Turn your breaker off, and I always test it with a tester, even though if I got my breaker off, and I know in my head 99.9% .9 sure it's off, I still put a, a tester on it to make sure. You'll run it through. You're going to have three wires. This is a 220 plug, 220 well, 220 feed coming in. 
uh, you're going to want to make sure that um, your ground wire, you've got two wires plus a ground, if you can see that little that brown ground wire, you'll want it attached to the green ground screws that are right here. Those two screws right there are ground screws. You'll want that brown wire attached to them. Bring the other wires in. I bring them in from opposite sides. I guess you really have to. And on this one, I've got the, uh, I've got this, instead of just having a bare ground wire, I've got uh, a little terminal in there on it. So I'll bring those in. All right, so now you have to hook up the wires on top. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, in this case, you get a little schematic. In this case, the two terminals in the middle, and probably all of them, all of them I've ever used, and I've replaced uh, half a dozen of these. The middle is the motor. So the middle two terminals goes to feed the motor. It needs to go, this, this line is coming, uh, it's coming up from the motor. It's going to the motor from the switch. So these two will go to the outside. These two will go to the inside terminals to feed the motor. Now let me show you a little trick I did on this one. These terminals, the terminal ends, were too wide to go in that between the two black pieces, the two insulating pieces. The terminals were too wide. These things were too wide to go in there. So I shaved them down a little bit on the side to make them small enough, narrow enough to go in there. Snug all four of these down. And make sure the wires are pressed down enough where your cap will fit on. Now some of you saying, man, you've got to have a grommet. You've got to have a something in there to protect water from splashing in. I did find the little rubber grommet. Want to make sure two things. First of all, you hear the pump come on. Secondly, you don't want any, any leaks from this riser from where it connects right there where the Teflon tape was. You don't want any leaks from that. Let's flip the breaker back on. And right now those terminals are hot so you don't want to get your hands close to them. If and when it runs out of water, it'll flip down in that position. And you'll, all you'll have to do to turn it back on, after it's primed, after your well has come back up enough, is to hold this. And again, that's probably 10 pounds of, of pressure I'm, it's going to take for me to turn it up. And then you'll see that I can let go of it. You're not going to be able to feel it, but I can listen for the pump. The blue tank is filling up with water. I'm feeling a lot less tension on that handle. where the handle will stay will stay uh, on until it pressurizes. You'll see it kick off when it reaches pressure, which on this pump, I, on this switch, I believe it's 60 pounds. You'll see it kick off. And once it's working, I believe this one, this particular one is a 4060, which means at 40 pounds, it'll kick back on. And at 60 pounds, it'll kick off. So that is how to replace a water well switch. Unfortunately, in my case, that did not cure the problem because the problem is in the motor. The switch was, uh, you know, kind of crapped out anyway, so it didn't hurt to replace it, and they're not that expensive. In fact, the best place to buy one is on Amazon. I bought one about $15 cheaper on Amazon than I could at uh, Lowe's. So I'll put a link to the switch below if you need one. 
just be aware that I have got to have the service people come out because the problem is down the hole. Not right there. All right. I will video the pump replacement, but this is a switch replacement. Look for the video on the pump replacement. It'll come up soon. All right. We're gone.